Now, have you ever realized that you just ask the wrong person the wrong question? <laughs> well, after five years of RV living and RV travel, we have just about seen and heard it all. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the five things you should never, ever, under any circumstances, ask an RVer or say to an RVer. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Hi, my name is Charity, and if you're new to the channel, myself, my husband, Ben, our kids, our dog, our two cats, we've been traveling the US in our RV for five years now, and we have learned a ton along the way. So we created this channel not only to share our experiences, but also our fails, RV tips and tricks, RV storage, organization hacks, fun places to visit, things to do, and some of the best food along the way. So if any of that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time a new video releases. So let's jump right in with things that you don't want to say to an RV. <laughs> I am so sorry. I have no clue what it would feel like to be homeless. Your poor, poor children just must be so isolated. Hope you enjoy driving around with a whole tank full of your own poo. Now, those of us that are on the road have chosen to live a mobile lifestyle and sometimes more of a nomadic lifestyle. And that's just a lifestyle decision. Same as some people choose to live in a house, some people choose to live in an apartment. It's just really a lifestyle choice. So one thing to remember is to just respect people's lifestyle choices. And just because that is their lifestyle choice doesn't necessarily mean that they're socioeconomically challenged or anything of the sort. They're just wanting something different out of life and wanting to pursue things in a different way than maybe somebody else that has chosen to settle down in the suburbs. Okay, so like what you need right there is actually a hose spreader. What do you mean your fridge doesn't work? I mean, it's really simple. All you have to do is plug the fridge in to the outlet and it'll work. This is kind of where the old adage comes in to where if you're not quite sure about the answer to a question, it's probably better to just say so than give incorrect or inaccurate information. Now, RVers rely on very accurate information about things like campsites and road conditions and other aspects of travel. So it's super important to those of us that are on the road to have very accurate information because accurate information really helps us in our decision-making process. So if somebody tells us that that particular parking lot is RV friendly, well, we need to make sure there's plenty of room for us to be able to turn our very large RV around or be able to park and so forth. Same as if somebody says that campground can accommodate a 40 foot RV and then the sites are so small or the roads are so narrow that there's no way to maneuver a larger RV. Well, that can really put RVers in a bind. So it's super important if you're going to provide an RVer with information, make sure that it's pretty darn accurate. Now, something you will never, ever, and I do mean never, hear an RVer tell another RVer <laughs> is how comfortable that their factory RV mattress is because 90% of them are just awful and we're speaking from personal experience here. So when we went to replace our factory RV mattress with a different one, we chose a new mattress from rvmattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. We went with the Aurora Lux hybrid mattress and it has been great having a mattress that really does feel like a real bed and not like an RV bed. Now the process to get it shipped to us and then get it into the RV was super simple because their mattresses actually come rolled up in a box and wrapped tightly in plastic. So it's very easy to get through the door, back to the bedroom, unwrap the plastic and it poofs right up. But maybe you're not full time or maybe you're part time one of the things we realized when we were in our RV, we were actually sleeping much better than when we were at our Glamper Hideaway, which is our home base vacation rental. So we went through brooklynbedding.com, which is an RV mattress parent company, to get another mattress for the Glamper Hideaway. We also recently upgraded all of the mattresses in the Hideaway to Brooklyn Bedding mattresses because when we're hosting guests, we just want to make sure that they're getting a really restful night's sleep. Now, Brooklyn Bedding mattresses are made right here in the US, shipped for 
free and come with a 10 year warranty. So as far as mattresses go, we're set for a really long time. One of the things we wanna do is be a resource for the RV community. And so we partner with brands when we can and RV Mattress has given 30% off to our viewers this month. That's the largest discount that they have offered yet. So if you are considering a new mattress, check out rvmattress.com forward slash grateful to get 30% off or visit the link below. A huge thanks to RV Mattress for sponsoring this video. Must be nice to be driving around in a million dollar RV there. So you're retired, right? Because I thought only retired people drove around in RVs. Oh, so you're not retired? Oh, you're one of those trust fund baby people then. I get it. It's never a good idea to make assumptions about anybody really, but especially based on the appearance or the type of RV that they're driving. Now, RVers come from all walks of life and have very diverse backgrounds. So it's important to just treat everyone with respect and kindness first and foremost, but also to remember that just because somebody pulls into the campground in what looks to be a million dollar RV doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. And the same as somebody that pulls into an RV that might not look so great on the outside, it could be renovated and absolutely luxurious on the inside. So this is really where it just comes back to the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Hey, you wanna come over and we can sing songs around the campfire later? Kumbaya, my lord. Everybody, hold hands, hold hands, hold on. Kumbaya. Hey, you wanna come over for dinner? Hey, how about coffee? Oh my gosh, you've been on the road for how long? I'm sure you have tons of stories and I wanna hear all of them right now. So the next thing to never say to an RVer is something that could be perceived as really just being too pushy. Now, some RVers really enjoy sharing their experiences and their stories, but some people have chosen this lifestyle because maybe they just need some time to themselves and they prefer to keep to themselves, especially if they tend to be more on the introverted side. It's important to respect people's boundaries and to not be too pushy or intrusive when it comes to people inside of a campground. So just remember, not everybody wants to sit around the campfire at the campground every single night with everybody that's there. Some people need some downtime and some people actually just need some alone time to be able to recharge their personal batteries. Oh, man, that really must be nice. Be like on vacation all the time, not having anything to do. What do you actually do all day, huh? Now the next thing you never really ever want to say to an RVer is, asking them what it's like to be on a perpetual vacation. <laughs> there is kind of a misconception that RVers are all wealthy or trust fund babies and can afford to travel whenever and wherever they want. And why some RVers may have more significant financial resources than others. Many have just found creative ways to either make an income on the road or make their mobile lifestyle more affordable, such as just living frugally and continuing to work or choosing more affordable destinations and campsites like boondocking. So it's important to remember, you just never know what someone's situation is and a Assuming that they're retired or on a perpetual vacation, well, that's just not always the case. So overall, it's important to recognize that our viewers and those of us that are living this lifestyle, we come from all walks of life and have a variety of reasons that we have chosen this particular mobile lifestyle. We're a diverse and vibrant community that probably shouldn't be stereotyped or pigeonholed based on different misconceptions out there. But one of the things we've really learned about the RV community is it's an amazing community. Everybody is so helpful. And overall, RVers are some of the best people that you are ever going to connect with. Actually, Charity, Charity's making me mac and cheese later on tonight. We've got plans. I appreciate it though. what this thing does. Um, actually, it's not a million dollar RV. It's, uh, it's, uh, what? What did I say? Mm, actually, no, it's not a million dollar RV. This, this thing is like 20 years old. And, uh, uh no, that's, that's all right. I've actually got something I got to do over here. 
I don't drink coffee. Oh yeah, actually my attorneys just told me that I'm gonna have to refrain from telling those stories. Sorry. Yeah, actually this is not a perpetual vacation. We are still working while living a mobile lifestyle and actually we spend a ton of time working to be able to afford this lifestyle. Am I in tune? Okay. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. When she comes. You do know you're destroying the environment by driving around a gas guzzling RV, don't you? Like, nature's crying right now. We're actually very intentional on you know, meeting up with other families at campgrounds. Like, have you seen campgrounds these days? How many kids there are running around playing with each other? Not an issue. Actually, we don't drive around with a full tank. We drive around with an empty tank. We dump before we leave. Homeless? What do you mean homeless? Have you seen this thing? It's like a condo on wheels. This thing's nicer than most people's homes. I'm gonna leave a video right up here about mistakes that every RV beginner makes, so you're definitely gonna wanna watch this video next. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll see you in the next video.